Hey y'all, just a short video here to talk about the Judas spirit. Jesus Christ says in the Bible, he had 12 disciples, right? <clears throat> and just before he was betrayed by Judas, he said to his disciples, one of you is a devil. One of you is a devil. So Jesus knew that one of his disciples was, uh, let's call it a bad apple or a rotten egg. He knew that one of his disciples would betray him. Now, Jesus allowed that to happen because he knew that it was a part of his prophecy to be betrayed by Judas and to be crucified and die for the sins of the world only to, only to rise again from the dead. So even though Jesus knew that Judas was a devil, he didn't do anything about it because it was part of his mission to not do anything about it. Now, you and I, we are not Jesus. And what that means is that when we recognize that we have a Judas in our life, we don't just continue allowing that person to be in our circle, in our inner circle, in our sphere of influence. Because they will betray us and they will try to kill us. The Judas spirit is extremely extremely insecure. Usually the Judas spirit is suffering from some kind of very, I would say, extremely traumatic childhood. And the Judas spirit is trying his or her hardest to make it in the world. And what happens is if you're someone who's very focused on a mission, if you're very focused on your purpose, if you're very focused on your truth, if you're working hard, if you're cutting the crap out of your life, you're not fornicating, you're not wasting your time on video games, you're not watching the websites and spilling out your seed and wasting all your life force energy, you're not out at the club chasing drunk girls and all that kind of stuff. When you're living a disciplined and focused life, eventually, the benefits of that are going to pay off. Eventually, the cream is going to rise to the top and you are going to start to notice that you're reaping the rewards of all of your sacrifice and all of your hard work. Now, because you've set yourself apart in this way, this is where the Judas spirit comes in. The Judas spirit, while you were working hard and making sacrifices, and setting yourself apart, going to sleep at night alone, doing all of these things, you, you weren't conforming, right? You weren't conforming, you weren't trying to fit in. You weren't trying to fit in with the in crowd. You weren't trying to just go along and just do what everyone else thought you ought to be doing. You were marching on your own path, the narrow path, focused on your own mission, your own work. While you were doing all that, the Judas spirit wasn't doing that. So when the Judas spirit encounters you, it's going to encounter you in the form of a friend. And usually, because this Judas spirit is very insecure, the Judas spirit is going to project a lot onto you. They're going to immediately want to be your best friend, and they're going to want themselves to be that they're going to want you to be their best friend and vice versa. They're going to want to latch on very quickly because they're insecure, they're traumatized, they haven't healed, and they're envious of you because they see, when they look at you, they see where they wish they were. They see where they wish they were. They wish they were on your level. But while you were working hard and sacrificing, they were off fornicating, doing drugs, playing video games, drinking, chasing all those temporary pleasures. See, they didn't put aside the temporary pleasures to sacrifice for the long term. And so therefore, when they encounter someone who is basically like a version of themselves, except the version of themselves who actually sacrificed for the long term and is now reaping the rewards from that, when they see that in the flesh, they want that. They want that, but they didn't work to get there themselves. 
And so usually the way the Judas spirit shows up is they're going to latch on. They're going to latch on as a, as a sort of supporter or fan or best friend or somebody who really, 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 really eagerly is going to want what you got. And the reason why this can be dangerous, at first it might be hard to spot, right? At first it might seem harmless. At first it might be like, oh, okay, like, you know, here's this person that just really wants to be my friend. You know, that's cool, whatever. But if you pay careful attention, if you're discerning, you ought to notice that there's something a little bit off about their energy. There ought to be something that doesn't quite, it's like, man, something's just a little off here. Pay attention to that. Listen to that inner voice. That's the consciousness. That's the, the conscience, the Holy Spirit talking to you, giving you a little warning, saying, hey, watch out for this person, you know? Watch out. This doesn't feel right, and it doesn't feel right for a reason. I think women experience this feeling a lot with men, where men are coming on very strong, and maybe they read some kind of pickup artist book. They know all the right things to say. But the woman, women have had to get used to being able to tell that uh, something's not quite adding up. Something about this doesn't seem like the real deal. It seems like this person is overcompensating. And that's what the Judas spirit is going to do. They're going to overcompensate. They're going to be very charismatic. And they're going to appear as a friend. Now, the reason why... I make this video and to bring it back to how I started the video is that the Judas spirit, ultimately they want what you've got, except they haven't or, and or are not willing to put in the work to get it. And so the Judas spirit is going to be looking to sabotage you. They're going to be looking to sabotage you so they can take what you've got. And this is a parasitic energy. It's parasitic. Parasites feed off of the host and they don't give the host anything in return. So pay attention. You already know, you already know in your psyche as you're listening to these words, you know who the relationships are in your life that are parasitic. It's the people that when you spend time around them, you feel drained afterwards. You feel like some kind of transaction just happened. Like they're happy. They leave that interaction skipping and uh you know singing their song feeling all great about life because they got to be friends with you they got to be close with you they got to spend time with you and you're like their best friend right you're like the most amazing person ever right but for you it's a little bit like what just happened there wait a minute something about that didn't feel right that's the parasitic entanglement that the Judas spirit will make you feel. And so the key, because we're not Jesus, we're not Jesus and we're not here to allow the Judas spirit to betray us and kill us because it wants what we have. See, here's the thing with the Judas spirit. It wants what we have. And if it can't get it, it would rather we be dead so that it doesn't have to live with the constant reminder of its own shortcomings. And we are the embodiment of those shortcomings because we, again, we sacrificed, we worked hard, we set ourselves apart, we didn't follow the herd, and the Judas spirit, it hates us for that. It hates us for that because it didn't do that. It didn't do that and it wants to kill us. If it can't take what we have from us, it would rather us be dead. So, to conclude, the point of this video is to share with you that because we're not Jesus, when you identify the Judas spirit in your life, you have to get it out of your life. You have to cut that relationship off. You have to block, block access that you've been giving that person to be a part of your inner circle, to be a part of your inner reality. And this has some certain amount of risk because obviously it's going to produce a strong reaction within the Judas spirit. They're, they're not going to like it. They're going to protest it. They might talk bad about you behind your back or try all other kinds of psychologically manipulative tactics to get you to second guess what you've done. But just live in your truth. The truth is, to get to where you're going, 
you might need some mentors, some associates, some friends, some things like this, but you don't actually need to be super, super close to very, very many people. Most of your interactions can be like touch and go, just keep it moving. Just like, yeah, I know that person. I see them for 10 minutes a month or whatever, and then I move on. And so the Judas spirit it will be very sticky. It will want to be your best friend. It will want to hang out with you and go with you everywhere. It will always have flattering things to say. It will think you're the greatest thing ever since sliced bread. It's almost, it's a little bit like the energy of a dog, you know, like man's best friend, where it always wants to be with you and it wants to follow you around and it wants to just adore you and it thinks you're amazing. Except unlike a dog, it has jealousy, it has greed, it has envy, it has lust, and it's waiting to churn on you. It's gonna churn on you if you don't elevate it to the status that you're at, even though they did not do the work to get to where you're at. It's ironic that I would have dogs barking at me. <laughs> Maybe not all dogs are friendly, especially if they're not your own, but I'll just leave it at that. Watch out for the Judas spirit. Don't think that self-sacrificing yourself Nobody needs to do what Jesus did. Jesus already came and he died for the sins of the world. We don't have to go on that trip. We don't have to go on the messianic trip of opening ourselves up to that kind of persecution. So that means that when we see that the Judas spirit is alive in our field, which I can just about guarantee you it is, I can just about guarantee you that the Judas spirit is alive in your field if you are working hard to get somewhere in your life. And when we see that that's the case, we have to neutralize that spirit. We can still love the person, love the sinner, hate the sin. We can still love that person, but because they're possessed, we gotta get rid of them. I'm gonna just leave it at that. I gotta get going. Hopefully these dogs, uh, hopefully these dogs don't betray me and crucify me on my way out of here. <laughs> All right, thanks for listening, y'all.